Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is NAS and SAN introduction. So a lot of people get confused about what NAS and SAN are because they do similar things within the network environment, and so I figured, hey, let's do a class on introduction about these different things. So NAS is Network Attached Storage, and SAN is Storage Area Network. So basically, what both of these things do is they store data for your infrastructure. So, so way back when, way back in the day, 2002 or whatnot, we had servers, and servers are what stored all of the data, essentially. So whether it was a Windows 2000 server, or 2003 server, or Unix server, basically you had these servers. Then they started coming out with these custom uh, devices in order to store data. So basically, they started coming out with with infrastructure that's entire purpose was to store data its purpose was not to do active directory its purpose was not to do virtualization its purpose was not to do VPN or IIS or any of that all its purpose was was to store data so the first thing uh, that you should understand is NAS NAS stands for network attached storage really Basically, at the end of the day, what NAS devices are, are they are essentially file servers. So they are essentially file servers that that is all they do. You would not have a file server and then install other applications onto it. Basically, it is a file server. It's a NAS, a network attached storage device. All it does is store data. So basically with NAS, it is one unit. Its entire purpose in life is to store data. It may store one terabyte of data. It may store a few petabytes of data. But basically all it does is it stores data. Now the big thing uh, for the definition of a NAS device is that you are using standard file transfer protocols in order to interact with it. So basically this is the equivalent when you set up a NAS as a shared drive on the network. So basically you share out whatever folders that you create uh, on the NAS device and they are accessed just like you would access a shared drive on a server. So you would be using the FTP protocol, the file transfer protocol in order to interact with the NAS device or SMB, CFS, Apple file protocol, basically any of the standard protocols. So SMB and CFS, these are the protocols that allow you to copy and paste um, files and folders within a Windows network. So basically, that is how you would interact with this NAS device. Basically, it is a shared file server on the network. Now, when you're dealing with NAS, there's a lot of different NAS devices out there. You can use things like free NAS. Free NAS is a free uh, network attached storage operating system. And the thing is with these NAS devices, with these NAS, oper NAS operating systems, is that they are specifically designed only to store files. Why that's important is because that means you're not going to be interacting with that server or device in any other way, so it will be more secure than other types of servers. So again, one of the big problems that you get into in the real world is you set up this beautiful Windows Server 2012 box, you install the file server, you, you install all this fancy stuff, and basically you know that as long as nobody touches this server, it is going to run very well for the next decade, as long as the power supply doesn't blow up. Well then... Surprise, surprise, what happens is one of the employees comes in and decides to start surfing the internet on your window, wonderful Windows Server 2012 box, then gets viruses, then installs a screensaver, then does just a whole bunch of stupid crap on this computer, and all of a sudden you've got tons and tons of problems. Why? Because it's a Windows operating system, and people do stupid things on Windows operating systems. It's true, and a spaghetti monster, I've seen it time and time and time again. You walk in, you walk into the server, room and you see all this crap on the server and you're like what the hell's wrong with you right well the nice part is if you use a NAS or a NAS operating system is that all it does is is store files so if somebody goes on to it they can't look at porn they can't download and install applications willy-nilly they can't get onto the internet and check their gmail why because it's a NAS unit right 
And so that's one of the benefits of NAS units. Beyond that, since they're specially designed uh, for storing data, they are simply better at it than many of the other server operating systems. Basically, they, they are, you know, when they create the operating system, they optimize it only for storing and transmitting data, being able to send and receive data. Therefore, it does that a whole lot better. So that's what a NAS is. A network attached storage device is simply, basically a file server that's just an Uber file server that all it does is, is serve files. Again, like I say, you can use software such as free NAS in order to create your own NAS. This does not have to be highly customized hardware. You can go out and you can create a NAS device using just an Intel processor and hard drives and RAM and all of that. The main thing is with a NAS is that the operating system is designed to only be a file storage device. Now when we start talking about SANS, SANS are a different critter. And this is one of the things that people get confused about. So NAS is one box, right? NAS is a box that stores files. A SAN or a storage area network is basically a network of boxes to store data. So when you start using a storage area network, what happens is you connect numerous uh, different devices, SAN devices, and all of them store your data generally in something like a cluster. So with that NAS device, if the power supply in the NAS device fails, if the rate controller in the NAS device fails, if who the hell knows the user somehow shoves a virus onto it and it fails, um, your data your data's stuck until you can get it back up and working. Now with the SAN, what is nice is basically you can create a cluster of these storage devices and if any one fails, all of your data is still there. It is still accessible depending on, on what the replication strategy is and, uh, and what the redundancy is. You can have one, two, three, four, five entire boxes completely and utterly fail, but the data will still be there. You will still be able to write to the SAN. You will still be able to read to the SAN. For you, it will be relatively seamless, even if, again, an, an entire device fails. Now, the other important thing with the SAN and why these SANs are important is because you can actually map drives to the SAN. So again, when we're talking about network attached storage, NAS devices, basically it is offering up file shares on the network. Uh, S colon shared folder, right? You know, same thing you've been doing for the last 20 years. When you're dealing with SAN, what is really cool is you can actually map to the SAN and have that folder on the SAN seem as if it is a local hard drive to your computer. So using Fiber Channel or using something called iSCSI, you can actually map, you can mount, sorry, you can mount that folder on the SAN and now it looks as if it is local to your server. Now why this is important is because then you can install software so basically you're sitting at your computer and you mount to the SAN, you could actually install software onto that SAN and it would seem as if it is running locally. Anything that you would want to do local, you could then do on the SAN, you could store it on the SAN and not worry about losing that data. That becomes very, very, very important, especially when we start dealing with virtualization. So let's go over to, to my little whiteboard for a second, just so I can explain some of this stuff. Because I think when you see it on, on the whiteboard, it'll, it'll make a little more sense. So basically, when we're talking about NAS, NAS is a device. You have your computer, you go and interact with NAS, with FTP, or SMB, or CFS, right? If anything happens, it fails, and all of your data is gone. You can't get to it. Now, when we're talking about a SAN, though, a storage area network, this is a network of storage devices, and they become a cluster. So what that means is when you go to the SAN, you don't really know if you're going to this particular SAN device or this particular SAN device or this particular SAN device, this particular SAN device. What you see is just the SAN. And so you just go to the SAN. And now why this is important is because if this device fails, you're going to the SAN, you're not going to that device, so you may not even notice. If this device fails, you may not even notice because you are simply going to the SAN you're not going to the individual devices. So as far as 
as reliability and redundancy and all that. That's why SANS are absolutely awesome. The other thing that's great, the other thing that is so wonderful with SANS, and again, think about where I was talking about with that mount point for the servers, is anybody who has dealt with servers in the enterprise world, what's the big, what is the most, um, one of the most obnoxious problems you ever run into? The mo one of the most obnoxious problems you ever run into is when you buy your server, you are going to put in a certain size hard drive, and it is going to seem huge, and it's going to seem massive, it's going to seem like the biggest hard drive you've ever could possibly want. And then when like three or four years, that hard drive is going to fill up, and then you're going to have to be figuring out how to add hard drive space to that server seamlessly to the end user. And so the problem is you have your normal server, and then you have the hard drive that gets all full up, and now you've got a problem. Do you have to migrate the data onto a new hard, a bigger hard drive and then put it in? Do you have to do some tedious thing with you add hard drives and then you span volumes? It can just be a real pain in the butt. And especially when you're dealing with end users that want 100% uptime and don't want downtime, right? So when this, this hard drive fills up, on a normal server, it is it's just tedious. It's tedious, it's horrible, it's nasty, but you don't wanna go deal with that. But think about this, if you have this server, and you create a mount point to the SAN, so you're now storing all your users' data onto the SAN. What's the cool part with the SAN is, is you can rather seamlessly add a new server with 10 terabytes of data and then just connect it to the SAN, and all of a sudden the SAN will now have 10 more terabytes of data. So now, instead of having to worry about all this stuff, you just added 10 terabytes of, of, of data storage to the SAN, and now you can just use it very easily. So again, remember, all of these are their own individual network attached devices, and so you just add a new one with 10 terabytes of storage, or 20 terabytes, or 30 terabytes, or one petabyte. But basically, you can just connect it to the SAN, and now all of a sudden, you have all of that extra data um, at your disposal, or extra storage at your disposal. Now the big thing, the big thing with now, uh, why SANS are becoming more and more useful, it is that's the first part. The first part is basically you can add storage to SANS very, 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 very easily because you're no longer dealing with individual hard drives. You're no longer dealing with individual partitions. You're dealing with entire boxes. So you can just add a new 10 terabyte box and all of a sudden you now have 10 more terabytes in your SAN. You have to go in and do a couple of configurations, but believe me, doing a couple of configurations is a hell of a lot easier than doing a massive data migration, right? And if you need to, to pull an old device out of the SAN, you can basically just turn it off within the SAN uh, management console and then unplug it and plug something new in. So it's very easy to replace storage now. Instead of worrying about RAID cards, instead of worrying about hard drives, you can just plug in entire boxes or pull out entire boxes. Now why the other reason that SANS are becoming so important is because of virtualization, right? So we have started virtualizing all of our servers. Instead of having 50 hardware boxes, 50 physical servers sitting in our data center, we now have five or six physical servers with 50 instances of server operating systems floating between all of those physical servers. Now I've talked about virtualization before. I've talked about how uh, with this type of of virtualization if a if a piece of if one of the servers one of the physical servers fails how the instances of operating systems can automatically be migrated to other physical machines and a lot of you guys have said Eli you're a liar that doesn't make any sense if if the instance uh, of the operating system is working is running on one physical machine and that physical machine fails well, then how does it hop to another physical machine? Eli, you're a liar. They, do, they really have. They're, they've been kind of nasty at it. So let me kind of explain to you how this works. Let's go back to our whiteboard. So basically, what, what we have here is we have our, our, our virtual uh, environment. And so these are the physical boxes. So we've got, we've got four physical boxes right here. And these are the hypervisors. So these are what are running the virtual machines. And so then let's say we have 10 instances of virtual machines. So basically these instances are running on this hardware. Or so it seems. What really happens is that these hypervisors are connected to the SAN. So the SAN over here 
actually, in fact, is where all these instances of the operating system are stored. What the virtualization software does is it goes to the SAN, it grabs an instance, and then it takes it to the physical machine that has the resources in order to use it. So let's say this one takes two of the, uh, of the instances, this physical machine takes, I don't know, five of the instances, and this physical machine takes three of the instances. So we have this one machine down here, this one physical machine down here um, where uh, where nothing's happening it doesn't have any instances running so the instances are actually stored on the SAN but they're being run on the virtual computers now why this is important is because they're stored on the SAN they're stored on the stand stored 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 on the SAN they're not actually they're run on the virtual uh, on the hypervisor they're not stored there so if this machine here fails the virtualization software recognizes that and it automatically will then turn the instances on on a different machine that has the resources. So this is the big thing to understand with these SANs is that the instances reside in the SAN and then are pulled into the hypervisor infrastructure in order to actually be run. That, that is what is going on. That's why this, this new virtual infrastructure can have so much redundancy because the SAN is a cluster of storage devices that contain all the data, contain all the instances, contain all of that, and everything gets pulled out as it's needed. Now, you, you're probably asking, you're like, well, Eli, that doesn't make a darn bit of sense, because especially, you know, when I talked about that virtualization class, I talked about how if you pull the power supply out of one of those physical machines, the instance of a server will be up and running on a different physical machine literally so quickly that most end users won't even recognize it. So you're thinking, Eli, that doesn't make any sense. On a 10100 megabit per second network, if we're talking about networking, that wouldn't be fast enough, even on a gigabit per second networking. Um, that wouldn't be fast enough to transfer an entire instance. Well, what you have to understand when you're dealing with SANS is you start dealing with storage networks. So you will hear something called fiber channel. Fiber channel is something that is exceedingly expensive, and you will not see it until you're a big boy. <laughs> and somebody trusts you enough to see it. So Fiber Channel is the main uh, storage network that is used for these SAN environments. It is a fiber optic network, and it can run at, it's, it's at anywhere from two to 16 gigabit per second connections. So basically you have the SANs, all those SAN devices are connected to a fiber channel switch using fiber optic. Uh, cable and then these servers and this whole virtual infrastructure are then connected to the fiber channel switch uh, using fiber optic cable. So now you have all of these servers and the SAN devices all connected locally with fiber optic and that is why it is so fast. So when you connect to the virtual servers or when you connect to the hypervisors you're using your normal TCP IP Ethernet Cat5 Cat6 infrastructure that's what you're using so on your side your side it's TCP IP4 TCP IP v6 uh, Cat5 blah 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 on the other side on the data storage side it is generally fiber channel fiber optic 16 gigabit per second connections so that's the important thing to understand. Again, when we start talking about like things like networking in the infrastructure, in the enterprise environment, we start talking about different things. So different devices are connected in different ways depending on what's going on. You connect to the servers, you connect to the internet, you connect to the, 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 the print server using TCP IP and Ethernet. These devices all connect using fiber channel. Now there is a poor man's version of uh, of this uh, this storage networking protocol. There's something called iSCSI. So if you wanted to start playing around with this kind of stuff, iSCSI uh, is a storage protocol that runs over standard TCP IP. The only thing with that is it's going to be a lot slower. It's not gonna be, it's obviously not gonna be 16 gigabits per second because you're running over copper. You might get one gigabit per second, but if you wanna start playing with the SAN uh, technology in your little lab, iSCSI is what you are going to be uh, be doing. Uh, basically, you, you create an iSCSI um, connection 
on whatever NAS or SAN device, basically SAN device that you have, and then you can connect to that uh, using Windows Server 2012 and a lot of Windows servers and Linux and all that. But iSCSI will be a different class. But this is the basic idea behind NAS and SAN. So what you have to understand about NAS is basically NAS, Network Attached Storage. These are devices, essentially these are file servers. Essentially that's what it is. At the end of the day, it's a file server. That's it. Uh, the main thing to understand with NAS is that it uses the standard file transfer protocols, FTP, SMB, CFS, AFP, one of those things. Basically, you have to connect to it with some other type, uh, some type of network, uh, network sharing software in order to be able to do anything. With SAN, storage area networks, you're actually able to mount to the SAN. You're able to mount to a folder on the SAN as if it is a local hard drive. Then when you have the SAN, basically you have a cluster of devices. Those clusters of devices, if one fails, you don't notice. You can install a new one, you don't notice. Basically, you have abstracted the data storage layer from the computational layer, and now you can deal with the data very, very, very easily. Again, when you're dealing with SANS, generally, you're dealing with something called Fiber Channel for its network infrastructure. In order for all this stuff to happen so quickly, again, you're talking about anywhere between 2 to 16 gigabits per second. The thing for you guys to realize is you probably... A lot of you guys will probably never see this because it's exceptionally expensive equipment. I mean, just... Yeah, it's just exceptional. I mean, we're talking lot, lot, lots of money. I mean, we're talking about like sand, real sand devices. We're talking about twenty thousand dollar device for the individual device. That's not including the switch, and that's just one. So if you want to connect ten of these plus a switch plus connect it to the virtual virtual servers, the hypervisors, you're talking about two hundred fifty to five hundred thousand um, dollars without really blinking. <laughs> so just realize. The real SAN, real fiber channel is that expensive. If you want to try to start playing with this at home, you can use something called iSCSI. And of course, we will have an iSCSI class later. But that is basically the introduction to NAS and SAN. Again, a very important concept nowadays. And again, this continues the concept of abstracting the different layers of computing uh, and, and and creating infrastructures that only deal with those layers. So you have the hardware layer, you have the processing layer, you have the data storage layer. Before, everything was on one server. So you had one physical box, you had the operating system installed on that physical box, you had the data stored on that physical box, everything was on that one physical box. Power supply failed, you're screwed. If the, if the CPU failed, you're screwed. Now we're separating all those things out. So the data is in its own cluster. The hardware is in its own cluster. The virtual instances migrate at will. So now we're, we're pulling all those things apart. It makes it easier to manage, maintain, and if there is a failure, now most of the time you don't even notice. You know, now like with a SAN, with a SAN, if one of the, the SAN devices fails, you just unplug it, you yawn, you go home. When you come back in the morning, you order a new one, and two weeks later, you install it, right? Whereas if a hard drive fails on your server, you gotta fix that right, 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 right now. So, uh, so that's why this stuff is important. So as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. This class was uh, NAS, Network Attached Storage, and SAN, Storage Area Network Introduction. As always, I enjoy teaching this class and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.